take this derivative and should be zero, which is just um, which gives you a mu. I'll, um, after taking the derivative, I'm going to divide by Zm and Mr. Okay, so that gives you mu over Zm, dZm over d mu, plus mu over Mr, dMr over d mu equal to zero. Okay. Now I will define gamma m as minus mu over mr dmr over d mu. See this gamma m is dimensionless because mr has mass dimension 1, mu has mass dimension 1. So this ratio is dimensionless and this ratio is also dimensionless. And that's why I have uh, divided by mr unlike the case in the beta function. So, so as to make this gamma m dimensionless. Okay, so gamma m is dimensionless. Okay, and this gives us gamma m. So I will use this equation and this gives us gamma m is mu 1 over zm dzm over d mu. Okay, now again uh, repeating very similar steps as we did for the beta function. Let's um, let's so I'll take this equation, which is derivative with respect to mu, but I know that Zm these uh, this renormalization constants in in the uh, in the perturbation theory, in MS, MS scheme, they do not depend on mu explicitly, they depend only on lambda r. So let me, instead of using total derivative with respect to mu, convert it to a derivative with respect to lambda r, okay? That's what I'll do now. So, you, as before, you get mu d over d mu is equal to um, mu del over del mu plus del over del lambda r and then del lambda r over del d lambda r over d mu times mu that is beta function okay that is beta tilde or maybe I can write it closer plus del over del mr mu times d mr over d mu okay and these will give you zero okay when you act this thing on Zm because again for the same reason no explicit dependence on mu, no explicit dependence on MR when you are working in MS bar scheme or MS scheme. Okay. So what do we get? We get Z, um, sorry, gamma M. So here I am now substituting that. So um, mu D Z over D mu I will replace by beta tilde times del over del lambda R and then I get gamma m is beta tilde over zm del zm over del lambda r okay so now i can take the derivative easily because everything is res uh, in the z everything is with respect uh, every i mean it's just a function of lambda r and epsilon so i can take a derivative with lambda r. you can replace this by a total derivative because zm depends only on lambda r right? there is no other other variable Okay, so now let's um, again do what we did earlier. So I'll write gamma m times zm is equal to beta tilde times Remember Zm we had written as, okay, this is again not writing this horrible, 1 plus uh, B1 over epsilon plus B2 over epsilon square and so forth. 
Okay, I had collected all the single pole terms, double pole terms, and etc. So this I will write as when I take the derivative, that one goes away, and it gives you d p one over d lambda r times one over epsilon. Okay, plus d b two over d lambda r times one over epsilon square. And other terms. Okay. Now we should put expression of beta tilde and Z M here. Okay. And uh, exactly as before, you compare order by um, you compare the uh, powers of epsilon to the n on both sides. So here you write Z M Z M as like this. Okay. So and here you put the expression of beta tilde, which is um, already um, I, I wrote just now a little while ago. Here this expression, okay. You substitute it there, and then you can compare order by order, and you will see that the expression for gamma m is. Minus two lambda r d b one over d lambda r. Okay, that's um, uh, what you get. And now you see that the gamma m, okay, gamma m is the thing which controls how uh, m r is going to change as you change mu, right? That's that's what change uh, controls. The behavior of um, MR with mu. Okay, that's the derivative. Derivative of MR and derivative of MR is controlled by gamma m. Okay, and now we have seen that that gamma m depends only on b1. It does not depend on b2 or b3. Meaning it is controlled by the uh, coefficients of single pole terms only. Okay, very naively one would think that um, all the coefficients. Whether it is coming from single pole or double pole or triple pole, they will contribute. Um, so, for example, at two loop, you both have you have both double pole and single pole. At um, three loop, you'll have triple pole, meaning pole of degree three and degree two and degree one. So, naively, one would think that they all should contribute, but we see here explicitly that only B one contributes. Okay, only the coefficients of single poles contribute. So now we can let's that's a generic result. Okay, it has seen we have not uh, used the fact that we are using five four theory. Okay, this is true for uh, any theory. Now I will write result specifically for five four theory. And of course you can do similarly for whatever theory you are interested in. So for five four theory. Oops. So for um, five to the four theory, okay, we have already seen that Z M is one plus one over thirty two pi square one over epsilon lambda r plus order lambda r square terms. Okay. So right now I'm going to give an expression which is true only up to order lambda r. Okay, because other single pole terms from order lambda r square order lambda r cube I'm not I have not calculated, so I don't have them here. So I will be using only this one. Okay. So Z M is this. So what is B one? B one is this part. One over thirty two pi square. Times lambda r, okay. So gamma m is minus two times lambda r, okay. Times this factor, which makes it minus one over sixteen pi square 
lambda r. Okay, so we have also um, an explicit result for gamma m in this factor theory. Okay, now let me make some remarks about the um, beta function. So here, um, we had mu d lambda r over d mu as beta delta. Okay? And uh, remember that we are doing perturbation theory. So suppose that in a theory, whichever theory you are looking at, this beta function turns out to be positive, meaning the rate of change of lambda with mu is positive. Okay? So as you increase mu, because beta tilde is positive, lambda r will increase. Okay? So if beta tilde is positive, then lambda r mu increases as you increase mu. Okay? And if beta tilde is negative, then this decreases as you increase mu. Okay, and that is a very useful uh, um, piece of information because that can, um, yeah, you'll see why it's important and actually in, in a particular theory, you, in particular set of theories, you get beta tilde to be negative, and a uh, Nobel Prize was also awarded for uh, showing that that beta function is negative in, in those theories. So anyhow, uh, uh, one of the important reasons why one is interested in the uh, sign of beta function is precisely why these coupling constants, I mean, how these coupling constants behave as you change the scale of, uh, as you change the scale mu. And actually, we'll see uh, uh, later in in detail um, why this beta function would be uh, why the sign of beta function would be uh, interesting for us. Okay, when we analyze more in uh, in more detail about the renormalization group equations. Okay, when we analyze how Green's functions behave as you change scales and uh, how they behave when you um, scale up the physical momenta. Okay, right now I'm talking only about the mu which is non-physical. It's not a parameter really in your theory. Things should be independent of mu. Okay, but later I will um, relate things, uh, the behavior of Green's functions to the change of scale of uh, physical momenta in the theory. Okay, and I will be interested in high energy behavior. So anyway, uh, we'll see all that in the next video or we'll start look, uh, going towards that in the next video. And I hope you have um, an understanding of what these beta functions and what this gamma m are doing and how they can be calculated in perturbation theory. Also one remark that suppose you calculate beta function and it turns out to be positive, okay? Like here, in this case, it is positive. So beta one is positive. So as you increase the scale mu, this lambda starts growing, okay? But then that will not, uh, that, that expression you cannot use after a while because once the lambda r has become large, sufficiently large, okay, or of the order one, then you cannot use the perturbation theory anymore because having a perturbation theory means that the the parameter with which you are doing perturbation theory is small, okay? Meaning it makes sense to drop terms of higher orders in perturbation theory, and that you do because lambda r would be small or the parameter, uh, perturbation parameter would be small, okay? But as we see, if you are changing mu and it is increasing, then beyond a certain point, lambda r would not be small anymore. So any conclusions that you draw from there when lambda r is not really small, would not be really true, okay? And you will need non-perturbative analysis for um, 
making any any statements but as long as you are in small lambda r region okay you can um, you can use such relations and conclude um, whatever you wish to like whether scale, uh, lambda r is increasing with mu or not okay so one has to be careful in not stretching uh, perturbative arguments where they are not applicable okay especially when coupling start becoming of the order one Okay, we'll meet in the next video and see what we do next.